Thanks to the new Tales from the Pizzaplex book, number five, The Bobby Dot's Conclusion, we now know more about the blob, where it came from, and possibly how Glitch Trap got into the Pizzaplex. But be warned, it's weird. So slices, put on your aprons, and let's bake ourselves a theory. First, let's gather our ingredients. Okay, what is this mythical story? I guess we should dive into what it's about before we discuss it. It's called The Storyteller, named after the main piece of robotics that the story centers around. Here's an as brief as possible recap. In an attempt to lower the budget, head of the company, Mr. Burroughs, suggests that they create an AI connected to the rest of the Pizzaplex in order to make up stories and directives for the animatronics and attractions. That way they could fire the creative team and instead focus on maintaining this creation, which they dub The Storyteller. Again, this map is wonderful, but it just doesn't seem to work right. This connection is good, but something is holding it back. Oh, oh, I see. The map that I'm using is region locked. It only works in Latvia, and I don't know where I am. I'm, I'm in the back rooms, but like, I don't know where those are. But apparently it's not Latvia. I need a way to make the online activity of this device seem like it's coming from Latvia. If only I had some way to, huh. A sponsor. This might help. <clears throat> Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Look, Surfshark VPN is perfect for me. Even before I was trapped in the back rooms, I liked my privacy. More than that though, I like working in public spaces like cafes, and to do that, I have to use public Wi-Fi. And public Wi-Fi and privacy don't work well. And that's where Surfshark VPN steps in. It encrypts your data, so even if you're on a public network, their military-grade encryption keeps you safe. But it's not just about protection, it's also about benefits. My friend and I really love to play Sea of Thieves together, but something that's even more fun is getting on the same server while piloting different ships. But he lives in another country, so we never would get paired up on the same server. Until I started using Surfshark VPN and made my internet look like it was coming from his country. And because of that, Surfshark VPN gave us the possibility to play in the same server. Most importantly right now though, it allows you to access region locked content, like this map app that I've been trying to use in the back rooms. The app is region locked to only work when you're within Latvia. I need to use it here, so I'll just log on to Surfshark VPN and I will change my current location that is Huh, apparently the back rooms are in Ohio. And change it to Latvia. Trust me, this is a service you definitely want. And one of their best deals I've ever heard of. You can get their 24 month VPN plan and with my code RITOST at checkout or by scanning that QR code, you can get 83% off and three bonus months. That's 27 months at 83% off their 24 month plan. It's an insane deal. For one of the best VPN solutions for all of your devices and 24 seven support and a 30 day back money guarantee, you'd be crazy to not go for that deal. So seriously, go get it for yourself. Thanks again to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video. Surfshark VPN, secure your digital life. Oh, oh, the map is working now. Okay, let me zoom into where I am. Right, okay, I've been there before. I see something moving. I, it's probably the monster from a while ago. Make sure to avoid that and that square thing. Is that a door? Head of the creative team and old man, Edwin, is furious at the idea, insisting that it can't work because human creation is what drives Fazbear Entertainment. They go along with it anyway and start creating a gigantic machine in the center of the Pizzaplex, all housed within a giant fake boabab tree. The storyteller itself is under incredible secrecy as nobody is allowed to look inside the tree. It also has a series of fiber optic cables going from the tree throughout the entire Pizzaplex, acting as a sort of roots of the robotics, but also controlling everything within the facility. It connects to every animatronic housing, attraction, and facility. While they were building it, Edwin snooped around and noticed that they placed the head of the Tiger Rock animatronic inside of it. We're not told his history of the thing, but we are told that Edwin then has a panic attack relating to memories about that animatronic, blood, and screaming. A few months later, when the storyteller is finished and activated, things start going wrong pretty quickly. The animatronics all take on hyper and aggressive versions of themselves, much like we see in the games. Roxy becomes a bully to customers, Chica becomes really snarky and snippy, as does her cupcake. Note here, Chica is described as being yellow and having a cupcake with her. Definitely not the Glamrock Chica design. Monty is described as being aggressive or isolating and flip-flopping between, and even Freddy takes on this really funny diva role where he kind of just 
just turns into a spoiled child. Edwin knows that this is probably due to the storyteller, so he does even more snooping and makes his way into the Boabab tree. Lo and behold, when he gets in there, he finds that it's one large supercomputer with the tiger head animatronic directly hooked up to it. He does some hacking and finds out the animatronic primarily came with a program called Mimic One. He then spends the next few days going in every day trying to rewrite this program to fix the issue. Mr. Burroughs is informed that Edwin keeps sneaking into the Boabab tree, and he then blames Edwin for all these issues. To get back at him, he eventually locks Edwin in when he sneaks in. He does this secretly in case things go wrong, but the Boabab tree is airtight. He assumes that within a day or two, when the air starts running out, Edwin will have no choice but to beg to be let out, and people will find out that he's been messing with things. But several days go by, and Edwin Edwin never does. Getting paranoid, Mr. Burroughs opens the door himself to see what's going on. He finds a dead Edwin in the middle of drawing a stick figure, as well as a piece of paper with a crayon writing, I'm sorry. Before he can leave though, the door behind him shuts. Mr. Burroughs starts freaking out, tries to log in but his password doesn't work, punches the Tiger Rock animatronic head to no avail, and even rips it out of the wall. But even when it's entirely disconnected, all the lights stay on and the storyteller keeps working. Mr. Burroughs suffocates in there as well. This one is a doozy and even more than GGY was. But we've got our ingredients, so let's start mixing them and seeing what kind of theories start to form. Right away, this primarily seems like the book trying to tell us how Glitch Trap was brought into the Pizzaplex. I don't think that Tiger Rock is canon to the game timeline or if they are, they're going to be added in ruin. But the idea of the Glitchtrap virus being hosted on an animatronic head that was brought into the Pizzaplex? Completely reasonable and tracks with what we know. But okay, I hear you. We gotta talk about the goddamn tree. Is this canon to the games? Is it purely a book thing? I frankly have no idea. I know we don't have evidence of a Boabab tree in the games, but again, it could be introduced in ruin. Hear me out. The Pizzaplex has undergone several renovations and continues to do so. Roxy raceway gets rebuilt every other day when it collapses. We know they had to fix whatever that mess in the basement is, possibly looking more into that in the future. But having a giant tree that was built in the Pizzaplex and crumble and no longer is there, while it's unlikely, it's not impossible. So the real question becomes, if that is possible, is it necessary? Why would this ever have to exist in the first place? Well, let's think about what it was fundamentally. The Storyteller was a giant supercomputer housed within a Boabab tree. It was eventually powered and presumably corrupted by the influence of Glitch Trap. But most importantly, it had a mass of root-like fiber optic wires throughout the entire Pizzaplex. Those wires connected it to everything, so there must have been a lot of them, right? And if the tree is gone, we would have to ask, where did the wires go? Is there some sort of mass of wires hidden deep within the Pizzaplex? Yeah, the blob. Something about this thing never sat right with me. Most of us, myself included, took one look at this thing and went, oh, that's the result of the fire from FNAF 6. I mean, look at it, it's a mass of burnt robotics, done deal. But is this really what it would look like? The blob is almost entirely wires with some animatronic parts within it. The thing is basically a mass of inky black tentacles. Why would burning down a fake pizzeria and four animatronics result in something that looks like this? I think this story is giving us an out, another way of looking at the blob. A centralized AI network that coursed throughout the entire Pizzaplex became corrupted and was abandoned. And the blob itself told us this. The blob is sporting out a bunch of animatronic parts, but one of them sticks out more than anything else it has. This FNAF 1 styled Chica. Now we know it's not the original Chica from FNAF 1, because we see this foxy torso in Rockstar Row. And the foxy torso is rusted and damaged beyond repair, so presumably all the FNAF 1 animatronics would be in a similar shape. This Chica, on the other hand, looks in great condition. It's a little battered and bruised, but it's not rusty. For a while now, I'd been working off the assumption that the newer animatronic parts that didn't make sense were coming from extra copies of the Five Nights at Freddy's special delivery animatronics. But what if that isn't true? The storyteller's story isn't just about the storyteller. It's also about the Pizzaplex and the people there, and the animatronics. It goes into detail about how Chica is yellow and has a cupcake. We know that's not Glamrock Chica. In fact, it sounds a lot closer to the FNAF 1 Chica design we already know of. One that would match to the one we see on the blob. If the blob really was this giant giant wire network that lashed out, maybe it took this Chica animatronic along the way. It wouldn't be the first time that an animatronic was destroyed and replaced at the Pizzaplex. We already know this happened with Bonnie. Hell, this might have happened with Foxy too at this point. The only one of the original gang left might be Freddy. Uh, but that sounds like a theory.
theory for another day. So does that mean the Boabab tree existed in the game's timeline? I don't think so. Hear me out. Just because the Tales from the Pizzaplex books have been a lot more closely linked to the security breach continuity than the previous books have been, we don't have to assume that everything in these books is one-to-one -one with the games. When they have direct parallels, that's great, but I think much like the original trilogy, the books are primarily here to tell us what is possible within this universe, so we can apply that logic elsewhere. It's almost like the books are giving us the rules to a game that we already bought the pieces for. One of the stranger things in the storyteller, in my opinion, is the centralized unit, Tiger Rock. I really don't know why this animatronic was chosen. Like, don't get me wrong, he's cool and all, but I think he's just in the books. We have absolutely no mention of a tiger animatronic or a boobab tree anywhere in the game timeline. I think that these are our parallels. I think what this book is really trying to tell us is, hey, at some point in the history of the Pizzaplex, there was a big hollowed out thing built to house a centralized robotic system. That centralized robotic system had wires going throughout the Pizzaplex and the head of an animatronic was placed on it to aid in those wires doing what they needed to. But the head had the glitch trap virus in it and everything started going wrong right around then. Now, our job is a bit more straightforward. All we have to do is figure out what this giant thing was and what head could have been placed on a mass of wires to cause all these issues. And I think the answer has been right in front of our eyes the whole time. Another thing that always bothered me is on the path to the Afton boss fight. This giant Freddy head makes no sense. Granted, I've heard some people explain it away as part of the signage for the FNAF 6 building, but I don't think that's true. First off, we get this art of the FNAF 6 building, which doesn't look anything like something that would have a giant Freddy head. Sure, we have this sign, but it's in 2D. But more than that, look at the model. That's an odd Freddy head. That's not FNAF 1 Freddy. It's not Toy Freddy. It's not Funtime Freddy. It's not even Rockstar Freddy. The closest Freddy that head looks to is Glamrock Freddy. Maybe like an older version of him. That, plus the fallen infrastructure around it that matches the infrastructure within the Pizzaplex, makes me think that this was part of the Pizzaplex that caved in. I think this giant hollow Freddy head was an attraction, possibly our Boabab tree. All right, that's settled, but now we need something to attach to the computer and by proxy the wires, something that could have housed the glitch trap virus. Well, let's look at the blob. And guys, sometimes the simplest solution is the answer. I know it seems improbable, but what if it's it's just Funtime Freddy. After all, it's the current centralized unit of the blob. Why wouldn't it have been the centralized unit before it became the blob? It seems pretty perfect, but I hear you. Why Funtime Freddy? Why would he have the glitch trap virus? To be honest, I'm not sure. My best guess is that there's been a slight retcon in the design of Molten Freddy. We know that Ennard split up into Scrap Baby and Molten Freddy when they couldn't get along, but I think Steel Wool might be trying to redesign Molten Freddy into having the original Funtime Freddy mask, not this amalgamation of junk. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure though. Maybe we'll get more insight into that in Ruin, but I don't have a better answer than this. Because honestly, I don't know where else Funtime Freddy could come from here. All that aside though, let's pop our mixture into the oven and see what kind of horrors rise. Earlier into the Pizzaplex, but not too long ago, the CEO of Fazbear Entertainment wanted to cut corners save some time, and rekindle the old wonder of Freddy Fazbear's franchise. He wanted to see if they could run the entire Pizzaplex from one centralized AI network, basically have it run itself. He could cut labor, cut programming, and even cut creatives. It was perfect. And what better way to house this computer than inside the face of the franchise itself, a giant Freddy head. One that could greet guests and tell jokes, but also could house a supercomputer inside. A supercomputer whose wires went throughout the entire Pizzaplex, connecting to charging stations for the animatronics, Rockstar Row, the arcade, the atrium. They implemented it and it worked fine, but it was missing something. That little spice of life that was always in these animatronics. The CEO ordered that they went and go found the old parts that were used to scan into the VR system. Surely something there had to work. But if they did that, there's no way that the VR development team wouldn't hear about it. The VR development team that Vanny was a part of. Vanny informs Glitchtrap, and they hatch a plan to put Glitchtrap into whatever they think of bringing to that storyteller. Eventually, it's decided that they'll go for an old Funtime Freddy head. But before they take it out of there, Vanny implements the Glitchtrap virus into its programming. And just like that, 
Fazbear unwittingly gave complete control of the Pizzaplex back to Afton. Total access to the animatronics and all the facilities. So then what happened? Why did they fail? Because something else was on that Freddy head. Sure, Glitchtrap was in the software, but the hardware was possessed by something much stronger than a virus. The spirits, the remnant or even agony or both, of restless ghosts. Cassidy, possibly the other missing child incident victims, remained. And this clash sent the supercomputer into overdrive. Wires started flying, animatronics went awry, Chica even destroyed herself and was taken by these wires. And before anyone could do anything, the whole head collapsed into the floor, burying itself under the rubble. Then. Fazbear did what Fazbear does best and paved over the mess, hoping to cover up the incident and leaving whatever that angry mess of wires was to hopefully stay. Whew, okay. Right away, do I think that that is 100% correct? No, not really. I'm not super confident on how the blob went from being this supercomputer throughout the Pizzaplex to hidden underground at a place nobody but Fanny is supposed to know about. That part I'm super foggy on. Frankly, we don't have any information there. I kind of just guessed using what we have and what we know is possible. However, until proven otherwise, I am 100% certain that these two pieces belong together and are where the blob came from originally, and probably where Glitchtrap was inputted into the Pizzaplex in the first place. It just fits so beautifully, and it parallels perfectly with the books, it explains this head that we've had no explanation for, and it gives more reason to the blob other than, I guess it's just a mass of wires. But what do you think? Did I finally lose it? Let me know in the comments. And hey, the storyteller isn't the only bomb show from this book because we got two massive ones. The other one was GGY that tells us more about Gregory and his involvement in Security Breach. And if you want to know more about that, go ahead and click right there. For now, a huge shout out to the best patrons, the Toasted Slices, Emberisk, Charlie Bean, Lovey Puppy, Stormachow, Just BKZ, Chickpea, Lola Fembo, The Viper 26, Lehan, James Reiner, Emily De La Sierra, Givo, Snowblossom, Nika, Raven Eris, Angel, Glamrock Bonnie is an Agani, Dionysus, Bucky Ray, Mariah R, Razvan Rux, Luce, Mystic Angel, The Idiot Central, Mac Dav, Phantom Plays, Emmy Layton, and Inkline Game Studio. Whoo, you guys are putting me through a workout. Thank you for the support. But until next time, as always, stay toasty, slices.